Sarah Matz and it's me Priska Joseph. In the last class we have discussed with the chapter 1 real numbers and today we are moving to second part of the same chapter. And before starting our class, if you are watching my channel, please subscribe it and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Your comments are valuable for me, so don't hesitate to make your comments, okay? So, let's start. Here, the first topic is Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. What is Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic? It states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occurs. Okay, once again, every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factor occurs. What it says? Actually, so uh, in the last class we have already discussed about the composite numbers and prime numbers. Okay, so uh, see, um, 10 is a composite number. Okay, so uh, what are the factors of 10? It is 2, 5, 1. Okay, so all these numbers are prime numbers. Since 10 is a composite number, but the factors are 2, 5, 1 and these two, 3 factors are prime. So, uh, this uh, theorem states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. Okay. And this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occurs. That is, 10 can be factors like uh, let's start with the number 2 and we can write uh, like this. Okay. Or we can start it with 5. Okay. Whatever the order, there is no importance or there is no uh, in, uh, significance about the order of the prime numbers. Okay. So, the theorem states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. And this factorization is unique apart from the order. Order means either we can write like this or either uh, we can write like this. Okay. Whatever the order, there is no importance to their orders. Okay. Apart from the order in which the prime factors occurs. Okay. So, this is the theorem. And uh, hope you understand this theorem clearly. And... <coughs> We can explain it by using a number, okay. by using a composite number, that is, this is an example, okay. Since the one place is uh, 0, we can either start with, with uh, 5 or 2, so let's start with 2, okay. So, what is it, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 6, 2. 12, 3, 8 and 0. Okay. <clears throat> and the next prime number is 2. So, it can be written as like this. And next one is 2, 4, 0, uh, 9, 2, 7, 10, 5. Okay. The one's place is 5, so we can uh, divide it with either 5 or 3. So, uh, I am writing in this side. Let's divide it with 3. Okay, so what's happening? 1, 3, 6, 5, this is okay. okay. 1, 3, 6, 5. Okay, next step is again. We can divide it with 3 or 5. So we take 3. Mm, 4 3 is equal. Well. Mm, 5 3 is equal. 50. And then 5 3 is equal. Next, we can uh, divide this number with 5. Okay. So what will be the answer? 
named Dua. Mm -hmm. Next is seven. Next prime number is seven. So one seven seven thirty. Okay. And finally, so these are the factors of the number thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty. Okay. Uh, listen carefully. All these numbers are prime, not composite numbers. Okay. So this is a composite number, and the factors are of uh, all these factors are prime numbers. So this is the theorem. Hope you understand this theorem very well. Okay. So next is an important theorem. This theorem states that let p be a prime number. If p divides a square, then p divides a. Where a is a positive integer. Once more, let p be a prime number. If p divides a square, then p divides a where a is a positive integer. What does it mean? Let me show you by taking an example. So, uh, let p is equal to five. We know that five is a prime number. Okay. Let p be a prime number. If p divides a square, let A is equal to twenty-five. Okay, then what is a square, which is equal to six twenty-five? Okay, so if p divides a square, then p divides a. That is, <clears throat> if p divides here, p is five. P divides a square. A square is six twenty-five. So six twenty-five divided by p. That is five. What is the answer? That is one five is five. One twenty-five. Okay. This is clearly this five is uh, clearly divisible in six twenty-five. Okay. So answer is one twenty-five. Uh, and what the theorem states that p be a prime number, p divides a square. This is a square. Then p divides a. Let me check. What is a? Twenty five. Twenty five divided by five is equal to five. Okay. This five can be easily divided in twenty five. So. This is the proof. That is, let p be a prime number. If p divides a square, then p divides a. Okay, p divides a where a is a positive integer. Since a is equal to twenty five, it's a positive integer. So uh, this is the proof. Hope you understand this topic clearly. Using this theorem, we can solve many problems from this chapter. Okay. Next is theorem one point five. Let x be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. Then x can be expressed in the form p by q, where p and q are co-prime, and the prime factorization of q is of the form two raised to five, five raised to m, where n comma m are non-negative integers. Once more, let x be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. Then x can be expressed in the form p by q, where p and q are co-prime, and the prime factorization of q is of the form two raised to n comma five raised to m, where n comma m are non-negative integers. In this theorem, it states that x is a um, x is a rational number and which terminates. Okay. What is a rational number? In the last class, we have already discussed about rational numbers. It can be represented in the form of p by q. In this theorem, it states that this x is a rational number and it is terminates. Okay. And uh, there is one more condition where p and q are co-prime. What is co-prime? Co-prime num two numbers are said to be co-prime if There are no common factors other than one. Okay, so p and q are co-prime, and the prime factorization of q is that is in this number. The prime factorization of q is of the form two to the power n 
comma 5 to the power n okay and this n n n comma m are positive numbers okay so this is the theorem let me explain it by some examples first one 3 by 8 and we know that 3 is a prime number okay then what are the factors of 8 we get on factorization 2 2 1 okay so this number can be represented as 3 divided by 2 to the power 1 2 3 okay so this is a, uh, as per this theorem this 3 by 8 is a decimal x uh, this 3 by 8 is a rational number where its decimal expansion is terminates okay so uh, next is 13 by 125 we know that 13 is a um, prime number and on factorization 125 can be written as Uh, 125 can be written as 5 to the power 3. So, this uh, as per this theorem, it can be written as 13 divided by 5 to the power 3. Okay. On checking, we get this uh, decimal expansion of this rational number will be a terminating. Okay. Next one is 7 by 18. 7 is a prime number. Then what is the factors of 18? 40. Again 20. Again 10. 2. 5. Okay. So it can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 to the power 4. And 5 to the power 1. Okay. So, let x be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. Then x can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are co prime. Uh, and, and on prime factorization of q is of the form of 2 raised to n or 5 raised to m. Here it is 2 raised to m. Uh, here it is 2 to the power 3. And here it is 5 to the power 3. And in this case, there are Two factors that is 2 and 5. 2 to the power 4 and 5 to the power 1. So, this is the theorem. And uh, hope you understand this. It's clearly. Okay. So, this is the chapter 1. And I think we discussed all the points, uh, all the important points from this chapter. In next class, we will discuss our exercise problems. Okay. Thank you.